Air coolers are very upfront regarding cooling capacity. The TDP of, for example, the Dark Rock Pro 4, which I'll review tomorrow, is literally written on top of the box. More about TDP, by the way, in this video right here. Liquid coolers, on the other hand, with very few exceptions, avoid this metric, TDP. But why? The reason has to do with much of what was discussed in this video right here regarding AIOs and why they're inadvertently lying to you, or why you might be misled by what they're showing you on screen. Since liquid coolers use just that, right, liquid as their transferable mediums in place of heat pipes and the vapor inside, the TDP of an AIO is largely dependent on the temperature of the liquid, as well as spin density, surface area, pump speed, and fan displacement. With most air coolers, heat pipes filled with pressurized vapor handle the transfer of energy, not water. So in the case of the Dark Rock Pro 4, seven 6mm copper line pipes stretch from the block below to the aluminum fins above. Copper conducts heat at a rate much higher than water, so things equalize fairly quick. The tiny amounts of vapor aid in facilitating the rise of heat from the block, so much like a mini water cycle, the compound vaporizes near the heat source and condenses near the fins. The vapor isn't absolutely necessary, by the way. Many cheaper heat sinks don't even have copper pipes or anything like that, but it certainly does help. Now with AIOs, the TDP actually changes as the temperature of the liquid does. So the true TDP of a liquid cooler is derived from the system at thermal equilibrium. The water is warmed to a point where the fan rad combo dissipates heat from the water at the same rate that it conducts it from the block. This is usually between 40 and 50 degrees Celsius to be on the safe side with respect to the pump. Now I know that was a mouthful, but rest assured most AIOs, this is what you need to take away from this, don't have particularly phenomenal TDPs. For example, the Deepcool Captain 240EX I touted all the time actually settles in at around 150 watts. They're one of the few companies to actually list AIO TDP, so good guy deep cool. But something to note is that this TDP is significantly lower than the Dark Rock Pro 4s, for example, despite having roughly the same bin density and weight. This is because an AIO's performance is strongly linked to its fan speed. Now the same goes for air coolers, but this is where things get really dicey. So the DRP4 again utilizes seven heat pipes, but the 240EX boasts only a single tube of moving water. Thus, the speed of the water up to a point does matter in a closed loop with a low heat tolerance, but the fan speed can drastically alter TDP because of the fact that water from only one tube is being pushed to the radiator where it's supposed to be dissipated, right, from those fans. So there are several steps that need to align perfectly for the system to function the way that it should. On a side note, most AIOs recycle the same ASATEC pump design, and while they're low profile and quiet, they typically don't cycle water quickly enough from the block in thermally demanding systems, which results in an imbalanced temperature distribution across the system. By the way, for those who sport you know, consumer grade hardware up to maybe the i7-8700K, you're not gonna venture into this kind of territory with a 240 mil AIO. In most cases, you'll be fine, pump speed won't matter. But this is exactly what happens with a Deepcool Captain 240EX when paired with an overclocked i9-7900X, which is an egg fryer. There's no other way to look at this thing. I have to run these fans at max RPM to even give it a chance. But if we assume that the heat building up in the loop is carried quickly enough from the block, which is the case in most cases, that's where pumps reside by the way in the blocks of these AIOs, then the fans become the major factor. I imagine Deepcool engineers ran these TDP tests with an out-of-the-box fan curve, which is what most would run their AIOs at, hence a lower TDP rating, and they also allowed the liquid in the loop to equalize at around 40 or 45 degrees Celsius. But in this case, with Enermax and their LickMax 2 system, which I'll admit I haven't tested yet, the claim is 350 watts plus. So how can two AIOs with comparable rad real estate have such vastly different TDPs? because the testing is subjective. Enermax likely ran their tests under max fan stresses and before fluid temperatures in the loop equalized. Even if we assume they did one of these two things, it's not a good practice. So when temperature deltas are higher, the rate of heat transfer is also higher, it's Thermo 101, and it's why the Enermax cooler probably appears to be a much better cooler than the deep cool counterpart. But this is vastly misleading. If something seems too good to be true, it probably is. I mean, come on, 350 watts, and then the plus on top of that, that's just, that's just a little comical. But in my hunt for other AIO TDPs, I was disappointed. Corsair, EVGA, 
NZXT, any of the big box brands out there did not post AIO TDPs in their websites. And I have a feeling it's because they're conflicted. Tell the truth and reveal that your AIOs are actually not godsends with crazy cooling capacities, or go the Intermax route and overhype your product on the back of discretionary science. In closing, I'd like to hear Intermax's explanation. I don't believe for one second that this AIO is capable of handling 350 plus watts of TDP. That's just... That's just insane. That's like saying that you could slap this thing onto any i9 CPU or Threadripper CPU, assuming you have proper contacts, and it would run like a charm. That's just not the case. Your fans are going to speed up to max RPM, and once your fluid equalizes, you're going to have a really, really bad time. So there you have it. That at least is why I think the TDPs of AIOs often go unlisted. This isn't a science. This is just my assumption based on what I've seen. But I want to know what you think, and I want to hear from you in the comments below. Be sure to leave a comment. I'll check them out within the first hour or two of this video going live. I also want you guys to give this video a thumbs up if you thought it was cool. Dislike it if you feel the complete opposite, or if you hate everything about life. You can feel free to do that as well. I will sympathize with you. If you want to click that red subscribe button, that would be totally cool with me. You can click that bell notification icon, by the way, if you're especially awesome, so that you get notified when videos like these go live. It helps me out. Every view does count, and I take them all to heart. I appreciate you guys watching these videos up to this point. This is Science Studio. Thanks for learning with us.